So right now we're in Singapore airport. It's about two o'clock in the morning and this whole video that I'm going to be recording without Josh unfortunately is going to be in India and we're going to be doing a vlog and review of the brand new Panasonic G95. Let's get it. just arrived in Delhi and we're now on the way to the train to go to Agra. I'm right next to my colleague Fletcher. And today's vlog, we're going to film it all on the G95 using autofocus continuous only. I'm going to swap between some 4K and Full HD just to show you the difference between the videos. But let's go explore India. So I've just boarded the train and we're just waiting for it to go now to Agra. So I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on the first impressions of the G95. So first of all, the body's pretty similar to the G85. It's quite lightweight, but one of the biggest differences is that the G95 is weather sealed, which for a mid-range price body is pretty damn cool. On top of the camera as well, you've got your typical dials, you've got your mode dial as well as every other essential dial that you require. But it also has a white balance of ISO dial similar to the GH5 or the S1, S1R series. The battery is still the same 12E battery that is across the G series range and it's got a single SD card slot. For video users, you do have a various amount of ports. You've got a microphone port, a headphone port, you've got your HDMI ports, and you also have a USB charging port as well. However, it is micro USB and not USB-C, and that's a bit meh, but at least you can still charge it in camera anyway. At the back of the camera, you do have a nice and bright EVF and a large three inch tilt touch screen, which is perfect for anyone looking to vlog, but just shooting those different perspectives. I really like the form factor and the actual ergonomics of the camera. It feels quite comfortable to use. And if you are an SLR user, then you will appreciate the feeling of the G95. So since I've been on the plane for like, 10 hours, I'm going to head to the gym now just to keep my body from shutting down and also to test out the time lapse feature which should be pretty neat. Okay, so now I've checked into the hotel room and have a bit more time to just talk about the features from the Panasonic G95. So one of the most important and probably the biggest change in the G95 is its actual sensor. So now it uses a 20.3 megapixel sensor combined with the Venus engine. So this is very similar to the Panasonic G9 and in their flagship range. So putting something of that caliber into this body is absolutely fantastic. In terms of video features, you do get 4K UHD up to 30 frames per second. However, just note that it is crops a bit. From what I've heard, it crops at around 1.2 times, which isn't too bad, but you can record in full HD up to 120 frames a second, giving you a pretty solid slow motion camera. There's only one thing I wish you could do in slow-mo as I've been recording throughout the day. I noticed that in the slow motion feature, you can't actually change a lot of manual exposure settings. It's basically all done for you. You can do a bit of compensation to say it can be a bit darker or a bit brighter. You can't actually change the aperture and shutter speed, which kind of sucks, but having that feature anyway in this kind of camera is pretty neat. One of the coolest recording features though on the G95 is it does have unlimited recording time. And if you do output it via HDMI, it can film at 422, color depth at 8 bit. And just like any other Panasonic G-Series camera, it does have 5 plus 2 axis IS inbuilt in the body. And as you would know from those cameras like the GH5 or the S1, the stabilization is pretty damn good handheld. And you're gonna see a lot of that footage throughout this video. So right now we are in Agrifort um, and it is stinking hot. <laughs> it is like 43 degrees Celsius. So the fact that the G95 is operating in this type of heat is amazing but 
around here is like a fort where the moguls used to kind of rule from and also this house in the background here um, was kind of like a place for the people to deliberate with the mogul leaders in order to you know solve all their problems or if they had any issues with government or where they were living they could sort it out all here how cool is that all right so my thoughts on the g95 vlogging so far really like how it's lightweight feels really good ergonomically in your hands with the grip and the plethora of uh I guess video settings that you get is amazing. Like the fact that you can do slow motion, 4K, that's all and brilliant. The only thing is the autofocus, I think actually does tend to back focus out a bit, but most of the time, like if I'm moving in and out and the tracking, it may tend to back focus a bit, but however, most of the time it does a pretty good job. So I'm quite impressed, especially after the many faults of the GH5 and even in the S1 as well with the DFD focusing. I feel the G95 is actually pretty good all around in terms of autofocus. Five times a day, like normally Muslim people do. And because he was playing an active role during the year or something. So, right now, we are at a garden opposite the Taj Mahal, which is pretty neat. and sun's about to set I totally didn't even point at the sun but anyway sun's about to set so I'm gonna do a crap load of photos to see how it stacks up so far the G95 has been pretty damn good for photos DFD autofocus is no problem at all for focusing um, in photos AFS is pretty good AFC at times does miss a bit but it's not the worst like at 9 frames a second I would say Maybe you'll miss about two frames, but that's not all the time. However, in single shot steals, in AF tracking and eye autofocus, the DFD system in the G95 is great. And really, you don't really need more than that to get some pretty good steals and in a wide variety of scenarios as well. And hey, enough of me talking, let's shoot the Taj. Right now we are like super off-road and it's really putting the stabilization to the test. Look at the goat. If I could do that. Alright, we have just landed in the middle of what looks to be Africa, but it's not Africa. It's definitely oh, it's India. Not. We've got some camels are waiting for us. Yeah. Woo -woo. Hey Fletcher, where are we? What are we about to do, mate? I think we're gonna go take a camel ride to go see some elephants or something. Oh, what makes you think that? Uh, because it had the elephant um, print on the on the page, and it was and it had girls' names and like I don't know. There's a lot of camels here, and there was only two names, so I'm just reading between the lines. Well, yeah. Look, we're definitely riding camels. I don't know definitely about elephants, camels, but we'll find out about the elephants. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so, <laughs> so remember, I was right. <laughs> remember for how we, I was talking about what we were going to see, and Fletcher just decided to be like, "Yeah, we're gonna go look at elephants." Well, he was right. We are going to look at elephants. Um, I, uh, oh. <laughs> So like coming from a very, you know, traditional full frame background, I'm pretty impressed with the performance in low light for the G95. I guess it does borrow a lot from the 20.3 um, megapixel sensor and the Venus engine processing that the G9 would benefit from. So I'm quite impressed. Um, as the light drops down a bit more though, and we start going into a lot more darking conditions, we'll see how the camera performs. Alright, I think it's um, that time for some good old camel polo. Let's go. This is some high paced gameplay. 
sportsmanship. True sports. <laughs> True sportsmanship. <laughs> yeah, big team. Uh, so I've just started filming. I'm shooting at about 2,500 ISO now. It is pretty damn dark and the footage looks fantastic. So if you want to know how it is for low light, it's pretty decent. Right now we're going through the streets of Drypore. It's another damn hot day. Um, tops of 41 degrees, but we're going to be taking some pretty cool photos of the city of Pink today. So I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a cow right there in the middle of a lake. Nice. All right, so we've finally hit the last day of our India trip. And yeah, I'm a bit sad to be going home to Sydney, but pretty relieved. Um, over the last two or three days, I've had some pretty bad food poisoning and alcohol poisoning as well. So it'll be good to go back into routine and start eating, um, I guess, normally again and not binging out on some curry and like other foods that have really upset my stomach. So. Otherwise, apart from that, the experience here has been really good and I've really enjoyed using the G95 as well. I would say um, between the S1 and the G95 in terms of how much I've used of each camera, I think I would have used the G95 about 60 to 70% of the time on this trip. So I definitely got a lot out of the camera. So now really, I'm just gonna give you my thoughts on the G95 after a week of usage in terms of photography as well as video purposes. So we'll start off with photography. The G95 is a more than capable camera. It does really well out there. The 20.3 megapixel sensor is fantastic. You get pretty good colors, very good detail and contrast in all your images. It's really cool to see the flagship sensor being put in a body of this form factor. Because honestly, compared to the G9, this thing weighs nothing and it is tiny. Like, of course, this is not the smallest mirrorless camera on the market. You know, Fuji and Sony and other camera brands out there do offer alternatives around this price point that are smaller. However, I know a lot of people that really enjoy that DSLR form factor. And honestly, the images that you get out of this sensor are pretty good. In addition to that as well, going into a Micro Four Thirds system, you are going to be going a very compact lens ecosystem anyway. So a lot of the lenses that the Micro Four Thirds system houses are more than like half the size of like even comparing it to APS-C models such as the Fujis, the Sonys, as well as Nikon and Canon as well. In terms of its actual focusing performance, so the DFD system is brilliant. I mean, using this camera and focusing on um, subjects that I needed, like whether it be people, whether it be moving cars or tuk-tuks or going around like the streets of India just shooting some street photography, I really enjoyed using the G95 for a lot of that. Um, I didn't really have any problems in terms of focusing issues there. Uh, most of the time I did use single point AF, but I did test out the facial detection features as well. And even in some cases, for the first time ever, I got to put the animal detection system to work where I shot a lot of photos of like monkeys, dogs, cows, just on the street like everywhere so it was really cool to see the focusing system come in really strong there for the photography aspect now moving on to the video part of things my impressions of the g95 for video is it is a brilliant camera for video if you are an enthusiast or are looking to do kind of semi-pro video or content creation online then the g95 is perfect for that 
you've got plenty of frame rate options in the G95 and that was one of the most attractive things about using this camera. I did make a rookie mistake going on this trip. I didn't bring an ND filter, nor did I bring a tripod. I bought a Gorillapod and just this 12 to 60 lens, which I think with most of the midday content that I would have shot on this, I would have shot at f22, so I apologize if there is some pretty bad looking diffraction in my videos, but I had no choice, unfortunately. Apart from that, the colors from the video look really good. Having Cine Light D as well makes it really easy for me to grade later on as well. The last thing as well for the G95 in terms of video is yes, the DFD autofocus system. Now Panasonic in their defense have come a super long way in the autofocus department. They have really refined the algorithm over the years. And with the G95, yes, you do have a bit of back focusing issues. I had plenty of problems in terms of, I guess, filming with people mainly. It will tend to focus the background and back to the person, back to the background, back to the person. I'm sure over time, the G95 will get much better with firmware updates. They have really come a long way. Like I, I'm really drilling this in. Like they've come a long way from the early days of DFD and the G95 is a lot better than what the focusing system used to be. So if you are an enthusiast or a vlogger and you're looking to get really good content out of your camera, plus on top of that, have a good camera for stills as well, then the G95, I'd really recommend. Like the features you get in this, the weather ceiling, um, the lightness of the camera, it's really fantastic. Um, I had a blast using this in India and, and I'm sure through the content you would have seen, the camera is brilliant. I have not much to complain about this. So if you have any questions on the Panasonic G95 or any Panasonic cameras, then pop them in the comments below. Make sure to follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and our blog so you don't miss out on our latest updates. Links to those are in our description below. And make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our future updates as we upload videos weekly. <laughs> Watching a game at this like